Shroom, shroom, she's on her broom. The witch is flying by. Shroom, shroom, she's crossing the moon on her broom on high. Shroom, shroom, I cannot lie. The witch is flying by. <laughs> hey, Tubies. It's Lord Iceon here. Well, welcome to Wednesday. It's Wiccan Wednesday. And today we're talking about a mystical and magical tool, the witch's broom. Here's one of my witch brooms. The witch broom is also called the besom. And witches and brooms have been connected for millennia. And you know, here we are now in the month of September. And you know, I'm our thoughts are starting to turn towards fall. It's getting into autumn time. And so we're going to start thinking about all things witchy here. And I thought today we'd talk about the magical witch's broom. So hang with us. So I thought we'd start off with just a, a few images of the broom. Now you've seen my broom, but there are many different types of witch brooms. And so here are a few for you to look at. Check these out. So there you go. You can see that the witch's broom comes in many forms. Well, let's learn a little bit more about the broom. And to do that, I thought we would consult the master, Scott Cunningham. Um, this is taken from his book, Wicca, A Guide for the solitary practitioner. If you've been wanting to get into Wicca and you said, well, I don't know if I can find a coven or I don't want to be part of a coven, get this book. This book will help you learn about the craft. He has a chapter in here, chapter four on tools. And I'm going to read from this. Uh, he has a section here on the broom. Okay. So let's see what Scott says. Witches use brooms in magic and ritual. It is a tool sacred to both the goddess and God. This is nothing new. Pre-Columbian Mexico saw the worship of a type of witch deity, Tazletotl, who was pictured riding naked on a broom. The Chinese worship a broom goddess who is invoked to bring clear weather in times of rain. Then too, probably because of its phallic shape, the broom became a powerful tool against curses and practitioners of evil magic. Laid across the threshold, the broom halted all spells sent to the house or those residents within. A broom under the pillow brought pleasant dreams and guarded the sleeper. Now, isn't that interesting? I'm going to just pause there because one of the places that I store this broom, which actually I've taken it down, but uh, I store it above my doorways. I have a few of these and I have little nails and I put it above the doorway. So, you know, if you want to bless your house, you can put it above your doorway or many witches will stand the broom over in the corner of the doorway area, so it's near the door. So the broom, wherever it's placed, is a protective symbol. I like that he says that. All right, let's go on and see what else Scott says. All right, so continuing. European witches became identified with the broom because both were infused with magic in religious and popular thought. Witches were accused of flying on broomsticks, and this was considered proof of their allegiance with dark powers. Such an act, if it could be performed, would indeed be supernatural and therefore of the devil in their eyes. In contrast, so in contrast to the simple healing and love spells that witches actually performed. Of course, the tale was invented by witch persecutors. Okay, so let's just stop there for a second. So you know, like I was singing at the song earlier, you know, shroom, shroom, she's on her broom, right? So a lot of people, you would say that the witches were, you know, flying in the brooms, that they did magic, they were evil. And so that, that myth has stayed with us for, you know, for a long, long time. But witches really don't actually fly in the broom, but witches do use the broom as a magical tool. 
All right, so let's continue on. Scott writes, <clears throat> Today, the broom is still used in Wicca. A Wiccan may begin a ritual by sweeping the area, indoors or out, lightly with the magic broom. After this, the altar is set up, the tools carried out, and the ritual is ready to begin. This sweeping is more than a physical cleansing. In fact, the broom's bristles needn't touch the ground. While brushing, the Wiccans, the Wiccan visualizes the broom sweeping out the astral buildup that occurs where humans live. This purifies the area to allow smoother ritual workings. <clears throat> All right, so let's just pause there. So. Yes, I've done this as well. When I cast a circle, I'll take my broom and literally trace the outline of the circle sweeping the ground with the broom. This is also another way to use the broom, and one that I actually really recommend. Okay. All right. Since it is a purifier, the broom is linked with the element of water. Uh, thus, it is also used for all types of water spells, including those of love and psychic workings. Now, this is really interesting because I've always thought of the broom as an air tool. Because in, in my mind, you know, witches fly across the broom, the air and the broom. But the sweeping to me feels like air energy. Just me. But I suppose it could be a water, water tool as well. It is purifying. That's interesting. Okay. Many witches collect brooms, and indeed their endless variety and exotic materials used in their manufacture make this an interesting hobby. Isn't that true? I have seen a lot of amazingly beautiful witch brooms. You know, there was a, a candle shop in my town I used to go to years ago. Uh, this lady was down in, I think it was in Delray, but she had a beautiful house, a Victorian house, and she sold candles. Now, she advertised her shop as just a candle shop, you know. But the minute I went in there, I got a really witch vibe. There was nothing there that screamed witches. There were no witch symbols, no pentacles everywhere. It was a very elegant shop, just full of hand, she handmade candles. And I kept thinking, I know there was a hidden witch symbol here somewhere. I just knew it. And as I was leaving the shop, I spotted it. A witch's besom was propped right in the corner where behind the back part of the door. And it looked very similar to this. It was not a traditional house cleaning broom like you buy at the you know Home Depot. It was a ceremonial type. But this is not an actual tradition, you know, a cleaning broom, like you wouldn't clean your house with, this is more ceremonial broom. But her broom was similar to this, and it was propped right back in the corner behind the door. And I thought, ha, she's putting the broom behind the door because that's a witch tradition. So I casually said to the lady, oh, I noticed your besom. And I used the word besom because besom's a witch term. I said, I noticed your besom there. She says, oh, you're of the craft as well. Like, we knew. Witches know. So anyways, I called her out, and I was right. <laughs> she was a really great lady. All right, so, you know, this broom is a powerful symbol of protection. And many witches do collect them. So Scott continues, he says, If you wish to make your magic broom, now this is if you're really crafty, okay, uh, you might try the old magical formula of an ash staff birch twigs, and willow binding. Isn't that interesting? So that's the, the traditional wood, uh, ash wood, birch wood, and willow, willow wood. The ash is protective, the birch is purifying, and the willow is sacred to the goddess. Interesting. Of course, a branch from any tree or bush can be used in place of the broom. While cutting it, Thank the tree for the sacrifice, using words as will be found in an herbal grimoire section of the Standing Stone Books of Shadows. Section 3. A tiny broom of pine needles can also be used. 
Now, this is interesting because I was at a ritual once where somebody had a pine branch off of a pine tree. It was only about that large, and it had pine bristles in it. And they walked around the circle and purified it. So, yes, pine needles can also stand in in place of a full broom. I love that. In early American slave weddings, as well as in gypsy nuptials, the couple often ritually jumped a broomstick to solemnize their union. I've heard of that, jumping the broomstick. Such marriages were quite common until recent times, and even today, Wiccan and pagan hand fastings often include a broom leap. I've seen that in um, pagan gatherings. They'll hold a broom, like one person will hold a broom across each end, uh, or sometimes they'll place it like over a door, like uh, at a low level, they'll tack it onto a door, and people jump over the broom. Uh, it's considered a form of blessing and good luck. I, I love that. And Scott goes on, he writes, he says, um, there are many old spells involving brooms. In general, the broom is a purificatory and protective instrument. That means it purifies and protects. Used to ritually cleanse the area for magic or to guard a home by laying it across the threshold, under the bed, in window sills, or on doors. I actually hang mine instead of at, I hang mine above the door at the threshold. Because if I put it on the ground, I'll trip over it. So I put mine above the door, uh, horizontally. So like, if you want to do that, I can't show it today because I don't have the setup here to, to move everything. But just put like above your doorway, like two little nails, and then just let it, let your broom rest on it. Like it'll be over the door and you'll pass under the broom. So that's a great way to, to do that. Okay, so, um, and Scott finishes this by saying, the broom used for magic, the broom used for magic, as with all magical tools, should be reserved for this purpose only. If you decide to buy a broom, try to find a round one. The flat shaker type brooms don't seem to have the same effect. And uh, I, I agree with him because I think that the witches of old used brooms that were more like, this is what we're talking about, a round broom, that the bristles are like kind of circular. You see, they go around them, but they're not flat like our traditional straw brooms. So this is what the witches traditionally are seen flying on. So anyways, if you want to bring the broom into your life, I would encourage you right now as we're getting close to Halloween you can find these brooms. I bought this actually at a costume shop. Um, I paid probably like three or four dollars for it. And it's wonderful. I have a few of them. I have them in each room. But you might want to start looking at Halloween shops or look online. Uh, you can buy these on eBay. Look up Halloween broom and you'll find them. They're made with... Um, these might be, I don't know what type of twigs these are, um, but it's all natural. It's bound with twine. The staff on this one's bamboo, so it's probably from China. <laughs> but I think it looks very witchy, and I just love it. So, you know. Now, you know, another way to work with the broom is to, to put witch symbols in your house of witches on brooms. And I love the witches of flying on the broom. So as I showed you earlier, this is an old Halloween decoration. Back when I was a kid in the 70s, um, you could go to the store and buy these cardboard decorations to put up in your house and in your window. I don't really see these much anymore, so you might have to buy vintage ones. But this I have hanging in my kitchen, which is really cool. My kitchen has a lot of witch stuff in it. So this is one of my decorations of a witch on a broom. Now also I have, and I did a whole video on this, I also have a kitchen witch. This is a vintage kitchen witch also from the 1970s. Uh, it's really old, but these are really big. Back in the 70s and early 80s, people were crazy about kitchen witches. And these actually come from a uh, Norwegian, Swedish, Scandinavian culture. But they believe that having a witch on a broom in your kitchen is good luck. So this is my kitchen witch fetish or doll. Uh, they call them fetish, meaning as a magical charm. But she's flying on her little straw broom here. Isn't she precious? Look at her. I love her face. 
She's a good luck mascot. I blessed her and invoked the power of the witch on the broom, and I have her hanging over the doorway into my kitchen area. I actually have two doors in my kitchen. I've got like a pass-through kitchen. So this is on the front door, and then I have another little witch, which I have named as one of my other kitchen witches, which is on the back outside door of my kitchen. Isn't she precious? Look at that face. I just, I'm just crazy about it. She's also flying on her broom. So shroom, shroom, the witch is on her broom. Zoom, zoom, zooming by. <laughs> In the sky, I cannot lie. <laughs> Isn't that great? So, you know, as I told I'm crazy about this. I also have this sitting on one of my kitchen counters, which is a witch flying on her broom. This is one of those, you buy them, you see them, they're, they're crepe paper and you open it up and so and then it stands up on its own. So this is a witch also on her broom communing with the moon. Looks like this broom is a flat broom. I don't know maybe it's just the way it's drawn but it looks doesn't look like the traditional round broom but that's okay. Hey whatever works right? So if the flat broom works for you magically hey go for it. Don't do it just because Psycho Bob says not to. But traditionally it's more of a round broom. And for those of you who are into arts and crafts, you might want to even create your own little round broom. This was given to me by a YouTuber many years ago, and uh, he made this for me as a protection charm for my house. And it's a witch broom, and it's filled with little charms. It's got a crystal ball, and it's got a lucky jade, because he knew I love jade. It's got an Ouroboros on it. It's got a little leather strap, a magical key all of that and that hangs uh, in my kitchen also on the wall so I have a lot of brooms I love the broom you know so anyways I just want to come here today and share this with you you know as we're going towards autumn it's time to think about you know for those of you who want to study Wicca and develop your tools one of the tools we never think about is the broom you know I never was into the broom until a few years after becoming a Wiccan I mean I knew witches had brooms and all but I focused on my altar tools, you know, my athame, my chalice, my wand, and my pinnacle. But I needed the broom in my life, and now I have brooms in my life, and I think they're wonderful tools. One of the ways also you can use the broom is treat it as a staff, because it's kind of a combination of like a wand as well. It's kind of a bit of a wand. So you can raise the broom, go outside and raise the broom, and invoke spirits. You can do sky magic or weather magic. If you need drought, you know, there's a tradition to go out, shake your broom at the sky and pray and bring, it'll bring rain, they say. So, you know, there are a lot of ways to work with the broom. Uh, sweep your circle, do invocations, use it as a protection device, all of these and even more. So anyways, I guess we'll leave it there today. There's a lot more, but I'm saying I've got another full day, but I am so glad you're here and I hope you've enjoyed this. Tell me in the box below. Have you ever worked with the magic broom? Do you have a magical broom? Or is that something that's new to you? Tell me about your thoughts below. I want to hear from you. You guys are the best. Well, listen, keep it here at Spirit Channel. We got more coming. Tomorrow is Vlog Thursday. I don't know where we're going yet, but just be here. We'll have something fun and magical. And if you haven't done so, make sure to go over to my website psychicbob.com that link will be below and register for my psychic development class we're going to have a class this saturday at 12 p.m eastern u.s time on zoom and we're going to talk about earthbound spirits what they are how to deal with them and you know, how to help them um, the term that's a fancy term earthbound spirits the common term that most people know is ghosts so our class is going to be how to work with ghosts. So if you want to be there, go register. The class is $30. It's going to be from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. It's a two-hour class. Where else are you going to get psychic training for only $30 for two hours? I mean, that's like giving it away. So go sign up, okay? You won't regret it. You guys are best. I love you. Listen, blessings to all of you. Keep it here at Spirit Channel. Make sure if you haven't done so, Please help me out, like this video, favorite it, share it with your friends, and hit that subscribe button. I'd love you to be here. Also, do you like it when Psycho Bob wears his witch hat? What do you think? <laughs>
<laughs> All right, guys, put comments below. We'll see you back here tomorrow for Vlog Thursday. And until then, may all of you blessed be. Now go sign up for that class.